Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to my traditional woodworking school. In this uh, three-part series of mortise and tenon videos, Will Myers is going to show you how to first cut a tenon in the first video and then cut a mortise in the second video and then how to draw bore to, to peg those two, two parts of the joint together to make it really strong and tight in the third video. So this is kind of the ultimate mortise and tenon video. Super helpful. Um, Will Myers shows it while he's building a really beautiful trestle table for a dining room. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope it helps you in your pursuit to build a dining room table. But to start off, uh, we need to, uh, I usually just start with the base. You know, you could start with the top, but on this one, we'll start with the base. And uh, as you'll see what we've got here, this is the upper cross piece. This is where the top will sit. And it's got two tenons, which uh, of course makes the two legs. So I start out with the legs. And, uh, if that will come out of there, so there we go. So this tenon, of course, doesn't, it stops, you know, at the bottom of that cove. So we'll, we'll lay these out. Uh, we'll start out with these tenons. Let's do the layout on them and get started with that. So uh, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and start with the uh, top, top tenon. And what I'm going to do is, this is my board that's eventually going to be, uh, uh, have mortises cut in it and set down these legs. To determine the length of my tenon, what I'm going to do, turn these up on edge, and get them even with one another. And I'm going to set this top board on it. and just get it where it's pretty close to flush right there with the, and I'm just gonna make a little tick mark for right now. Okay, I don't, this piece is, uh, I'm not even sure how tall it is, about two and a half inches. Uh, but by doing it, the, doing it that way, I could measure and accidentally measure, you know, read my tape wrong or, or your ruler. Um, we've transferred it from the actual piece so we know that to be correct. So even though it seems like a, a strange way to do it, it's the most accurate way to do it. We've transferred from the actual piece. So now what I'm gonna do is take my little tick mark right there and I'm gonna knife this in. Hold the square as steady as you can. You wanna you don't have to make this one real deep, but you can see now I have two tenons, same length on both pieces. Okay, on this bottom one, our footboard is, uh, uh, we're actually gonna be taking a half an inch off the bottom. So I know that it's two and three quarters. Let me just double check and make sure it's two and three quarters tall, so I need to make this one I am going to measure because at this, at this point I have nothing to scribe off of. So I'm going to come up two and a quarter right here and uh, exactly the same thing. I'm going to make a, uh, a knife mark across here. So now I've, I've located, made the lengths of uh, these tenons and we know that the shoulders are parallel and that's very important because these legs are gonna be sitting pretty close together and if one tenon uh, shoulder is a little bit lower than the other, it's gonna cause a lean. So we know that they're parallel. So now I'm gonna to move to uh, just one of the legs and using the uh, knife mark we just made, I'm going to catch my knife in, you can see, I've got the little mark right there. I'm gonna catch my knife in it, slide my square up to it. 
and knife the, these two face ones as, as deep as you can. Now I'm going to flip over. Same thing over here. I've got a pretty good knife line there. Same thing on, the, on this last edge and bring that all the way around. So now I have a shoulder uh, knifed in all the way around. And now we need to lay out the width of the tenon. And uh, to do that, we clamp this up. We're going to use these uh, tenons will be five eighths of an inch wide, and I've got a five eighths chisel here, uh, the one we're going to be using to uh, cut the mortise. So instead of measuring five eighths with my rule here or uh, something, I'm just going to use the chisel, which is the most accurate way to do it. And I'm going to set my teeth, and they're to just the width of that chisel. Okay, so now my teeth are, are to the width of the chisel. Now I want to take my gauge and I want to center this and it doesn't have to be perfect. But we're going to make a couple of marks that way and that's, that's good enough. I'm a, maybe a 30 second to one side and that's just fine, won't hurt a thing. And the reason it doesn't matter is we're going to be uh, put the fence of the mortise gauge to the same side on all these pieces. So this one, here's my triangle. So I know this is my face. So I want my fence to ride on this face of this leg. And you notice too, I've clamped this up and that frees up both hands to help with the gauge. You can, it's, uh, you want good, uh, nice straight gauge lines that don't wander. It's a little bit easier to do it. Um, with both hands. So now I'll come back and darken those so you can see, whoa. So you can see them. Okay, so now we need to uh, we'll mark our waist here. And it's a good idea to always, even though you're doing a lot of these and after a while you think, well, I, I know I need to saw over here, but uh, generally when I mess up, it's not on the first one or the second one. It's three, four, five, somewhere down the line, you know, you gotta get in a routine and you're not paying attention. You accidentally saw the wrong side of the mark. So. So uh, now with the layout on the cheeks of the mortise done, we're ready to saw. The cheek cuts here, we want to, uh, of course, stay in the waist, like we were talking about just a second ago. So uh, ideally, perfectly, in a perfect world, you want half of this line left. Uh, that gauge makes a little scratch and it's V-shaped. So in a way, we have two lines there, just right parallel to each other. We want to take one of them away and leave one. Doesn't always happen, but that, that's the goal. That's what we're aiming for. So you notice I've got this clamped up on a diagonal. And what I'm going to do is kind of work two faces until I'm all the way down. Um, and then we'll flip it over and come back from the other direction. So this is pretty standard on this kind of work is to work at a diagonal. You wouldn't want to come in straight from the end, try to go down because odds are you're going to wander off. Uh, before you get to the bottom. So, so here we're going to start uh, just in the waist there. You want to, of course, stay on the uh, just to the outside of that line. So what I'm doing here is I'm curving. I'm coming across the top here a little bit first. And if you'll notice, I've only come down a little here. So now I'm going to more or less stop sawing this direction. I'm going to come down this way a little bit. 
and I'm letting this curve up here guide my saw and I'm well, we know that ends okay for right now okay so now I brought this side down now I'm gonna come back up here and I, I've curved all the way and I'm starting to come off the edge right here and if you're going straight and everything's okay, go ahead and you can come across and that makes you a little groove to start your saw when we come back from the other way. Okay, say this wanders off before you get there. Uh, stop, go ahead and bring your curve down this side. Then when you reverse, you have a second chance of straightening it up from the other direction. So now I've got them all the way across here. So uh, that's good. So we've sawn a diagonal in there. So now I'm going to come across and do this side real quick. So now half of it's cut loose. I'm, I've come across my lines here. Now I'm going to flip it over. Now we have these curves over here to guide the saw. So the main thing we've got to worry about is this face right here at this point. I don't know if anything else could fall over here. But... I've come, got, kind of got ahead of myself there. I've come down, brought this side down. Now I'm telling you there's a triangle of wood left inside there uh, when you get to that point. So then very last, you come back, take that triangle and really watch your shoulders because these will show if you go past them. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now with the uh, cheeks sewn all the way down, we need to make our shoulder cuts right here. And they, uh, I usually clamp these up to do that. Um, you can do it on the bench hook. But these, uh, need to be as accurate as you can get them because they, they most definitely show. So what I'm gonna do on the waist side over here, this is our waist, this little tablet's getting ready to come off. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna take my chisel and I'm gonna chisel a little, uh, just a V groove up to that knife mark we made a minute ago. So now I have a nice, uh, nice little spot to Start my saw. And you want to, a lot of times I kind of undercut a shoulder like this, but this one you want to go pretty much straight down. Because we'll be seeing all, all four sides. Same thing again over here. And of course, don't overcut either because you're cutting into the tenon. So just as soon as that let's go stop okay we've got one more uh actually two more little cuts here on this uh tenon and they are uh we're gonna make two more little shoulders on the ends so 
So we need to take a little bit off either end of this tenon. And I don't take a uh, set amount right here. Just mark it and cut it. And it doesn't really matter. We just want a, a small shoulder. So somewhere around a quarter of an inch is what we want. And you don't have to measure this. Uh, but the reason being, when we get ready to do the mortise, we're going to lay the width of that mortise off of this tenon. So if this one is two and three quarters wide, one's two and seven eighths, one's two and a half, really doesn't matter. We'll, we'll adjust the mortises to whatever we made that tenon. So no use to like try to set up a gauge or, or something like that to do that. And Josh and I were talking a minute ago, we didn't know what the name of these uh, little ends of a tenon would be called. So we, we coined a phrase, we call them cheeklets now. So we're gonna saw the cheeklets. And this right here, this is actually my cross cut saw. I didn't even get the rip saw. We're just gonna go straight down. see my saw's bottoming out but that's okay because it's just about there one uh as we do the little shoulder cut here we have a, a knife mark right here okay we don't want to saw on this end right in that mark or cut a little groove like we did before. The reason being is when you saw it, odds are the teeth are gonna drag on this front shoulder and this back shoulder a little bit and make little notches and you can see that uh, once it's assembled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna saw off of that line towards the waist just a little bit and remove the weight. Now you see I've got a little uh, little bump left. So now I'm gonna come back with my chisel, which is, which, which is more narrow and chisel into that line. That way we didn't damage our front and back shoulders at all. Pretty good little trick. Uh, so now here's the other. And as you can see, there's a gap here between these shoulders in my saw. And we're gonna uh, come back here again, put my chisel right in that uh, knife mark and just push down. So there we go, we've got a nice little uh, uh, just a, a tin and nothing, nothing fancy. That's all we need. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and saw the other three on this piece, and then we'll be ready to do the mortises. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking, come take a class at our school in Earliesville, Virginia. You can also visit our website at woodandshop.com, where you'll find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours, and our very popular tool buying guides. And make sure you subscribe to our free newsletter to get our latest articles and videos. Enjoy!